Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another Monogame Advanced video. This is tutorial 1 for the Monogame Advanced series. In this video we are going to discuss rectangular collision detection. This is going to be the base of what we did in tutorial 0 which was introduce you to the series and create our basic framework for our series going forward. Okay, so some of these videos will be very quick. This is going to be one of them. We're just going to add a rectangular collision detection code and we're going to use the built-in rectangle.intersects that is included in Monogame. And if you are interested in the math behind it, I've already released a math video to discuss rectangular collision detection. So we're going to open up the sprite class and we're going to check collision here. So I'm going to add a method here to check collision. I'm going to add that after the update method. And I'm going to call this public bool collision. And I'm going to have a sprite for the target that we want to check for collision. So we're checking collision based off of the current object we're looking at and the target is what we're passing in here. And we're just going to get a bool for intersects. Let me move that there. So we're just going to check to see if our rectangle intersects with another rectangle. So we already have a rectangle for our, uh, it's a private field rectangle. and. My coding style is underscore rectangle for private fields. Yours might differ, so use your coding style for a private field. Remember, this is what we did in tutorial 1. Or, I'm sorry, tutorial 0. So, underscore rectangle that intersects with the target dot underscore rectangle. So, that will give us a Boolean value if it is intersected or not. So if it's intersecting, that bool value will be true. So now we have collided is equal to intersects. Target.collided is equal to intersects. And we return the intersects value. So we're just we're just testing our our current sprite with our target sprite to see if they intersect. Then we need to set both of those internal values. We need to set the collided values to our result, if it's intersected or not. And then we just return the value to whoever called us, that we do have a valid collision or we do not. So now if we go to debug sprite, uh, there's really no changes we need to do on here. So let's go back to game1.cs and let's start working on our implementation here. Alright, so game1 here, let's start, uh, well, let's set our preferred width and preferred height. Let's set it at 720p HD resolution. So I'm going to get rid of the semicolon here and I'm going to do opening, closing, curly bracket. So preferred back buffer width, that's going to be 1280. And that's going to be a comma, not a semicolon. Now I'm going to do preferred back buffer height, and that's going to be 720. And I don't need to put a semicolon after that curly brace there. All right, so let's change these to our field names, underscore graphics and then underscore sprite batch. And then let's add a few more for the uh, debug sprite and colors. All right, so private debug sprite underscore ball one. And I'm going to use a image of a ball, of a circle. And I'm going to discuss why once we see the final result. Underscore ball two. And this image will be available if you download the sample or I'll have a link directly to the PNG file. Private color clear color and collision color. 
So there's going to be two colors. If it no collision, it's just cleared. And then another color where there is a collision, I usually choose red if there's a collision that has occurred. All right, let's fix this to underscore graphics. And then let's fix this to underscore sprite patch. Again, your private naming style, your private fields might be different. I'm just going to go ahead and do private there. And private here. Okay, so now in the initialize method, let's go ahead and create the new debug sprite. So underscore ball one, new debug sprite. So now we need to pass in a new position. So new vector two. And I'm gonna choose zero comma, I'm gonna choose half the height and then minus some offset. So graphics device, so underscore graphics dot graphics device dot viewport dot height divided by 2.0 f. That's so we can get a if it's if our height is not even, it'll give us a decimal value. And then some offset. I'm gonna say 120. That seemed to be a good choice. All right, now I'm going to provide the color of our rectangle. So color.white, and this is just to show where our bounds are for the sprite. Since this is a debug sprite, not our actual sprite, it will show us where our bounds are. And then comma, and that's gonna be our speed. Let's choose something, how about 70? All right, so that was the first ball. Now we're gonna have a second ball. Ball 2 is equal to new debug sprite. And that's going to be on the right side. So we need to have a new vector 2 underscore graphics dot graphics device dot viewport dot width. So that's going to be on the right side of the screen. The first one is on the left side of the screen. And now I'm going to set it up at the center and then plus that same offset. So underscore graphics dot graphics device dot viewport dot height. Let me go ahead and move this to a new line here. So graphics dot height divided by 2.0 F and then plus that same offset value. Color dot white for the bounds again. And let's say, so the speed here, I want, I want this one to move a little bit slower. Now let's change the angle. So we're gonna get a velocity value and in order to do that, we need to have a speed and an angle. The speed is the magnitude of the vector and the angle is the angle of the vector. So those two components combined will give us the velocity. This ball one, we did not set a angle. So it defaulted to zero. We set up the debug sprites to have it as an optional value. It'll set it as zero if we don't specify anything. So now let's go back to game one. So we did not specify anything, therefore it has an angle of zero, which means it's moving to the right. This one, we want to move it to the left. So we want to have it as a float, cast this as a float, math.py, or math helper pi. either one. Uh, if you choose math helper, you don't need float. If you just have standard math.py, you need to cast it as a float, and that's capital P-I. So math helper is a float value, math.py is a double value. Okay, so now let's set the clear color is equal to color.cornflower blue. That's the default for X and A monogame. Let's set the collision color 
is equal to color color dot red. So whenever a collision occurs, the background will be red. All right, so I already created the content project, and I already added my ball.png, and it looks like that. Just a simple circle, and it's going to represent why rectangular collision detection can be a problem. So let's go ahead and use that in our file. So I already created the content project, I already added my file, and I already built the file. So as an X and B, underscore ball one dot load content. So we need to pass it the content manager, our graphics device, and our asset name. Ball, just ball. Copy that line and paste it, and I'm going to change that to ball 2. So we're going to load the same asset, so we just copy that line and paste it and call it ball 2. So now our image is loaded. We have loaded our content into ball 1 and ball 2. Now let's unload ball 1 and unload ball 2. You can... All right, so we have unloaded ball one and ball two in the unload content method. Okay, so for updating, this is going to take a different approach than what we are usually have done in the past. I'm going to update ball one and ball two and they need to have game time when you call their update methods. And after that, I'm going to check to see if there's a collision, but I'm not going to do anything with that return value. Ball1.collision, ball2. So I'm just going to check to see if ball1 collides with ball2. And I'm, going to, no, I'm not going to do anything with this value. Remember, this returns a Boolean value. I'm not going to do anything with that for right now. I'm just going to go to the draw portion here. First thing in this draw portion, I'm going to check to see if underscore ball one dot collided or underscore ball two dot collided. So if either one of those have collided, I want to clear the graphics device with the clear color. Else, I want to clear the graphics device with the collision color. Now I'm going to get rid of this line here. And now I need to draw the ball one and ball two. So I'm going to do underscore sprite batch dot begin underscore ball one dot draw underscore sprite batch game time underscore ball two dot draw underscore sprite batch game time underscore sprite batch dot end okay so what we did here was we checked to see if either ball one or ball two are in a collided state if they are we are using the clear cut or if they yeah, that should be swapped. Okay, if they are collided, we are using the collision color when we clear our graphics device. If ball one and ball two are not collided, if neither one of those have a collision state, we are using the clear color. All right, so let's press F5, and let's run our project if there are no problems. All right, so you see one of them is moving towards the right. The one at the bottom is moving towards the left. Now they have collided. And now they are not collided anymore. So in the post 
processing, I'm going to zoom in on this video and I will show you where the bounds show up. Where you'll see our four points for our rectangle bounds. Now I chose this offset, let me run this again, because you will see why there's a problem with just using rectangular collision detection and why I chose using a circle for our sample. There's a collision, but they're, they're not touching. It still collided, they were not touching. In order to fix that, one of the ways that we could approach this is to use per pixel collision detection, which will be a later tutorial. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next video, we will discuss binding objects to a rectangle. I hope to see you next time.